of the press box. Coach, so 2 0 start for you guys. How do you feel about things after two games, what you've seen from your guys? Um, I think I've, I've been more impressed with the little things they're doing right now. Um, you know, simple things like uh, some first time varsity pitchers getting on the mound and throwing some really good games, having some good outings. Um, some really fine detail parts of baseball they're doing well. Great base running, um, playing great defense. Um, situational baseball has been excellent. And I think those are the things that are really keeping us, uh, you know, in it right now as we kind of wait for some of the bigger picture things to turn on. Um, you know, bats are bats are slow right now, but it, you know, as always in every spring, it takes a you know a week or two for those to come around. And uh, you know, and, and until that happens, they're they're doing a lot of really good things um, that have been that have allowed us to to win late in games. Um, two two wins right now. One. Uh, was a late game, six inning win, um, zero zero, and the other one was a come from behind in the late innings. And uh, you know, it's a team that if they can continue to do that when they're down, when the big bats come around, uh, they're, they're going to be extremely successful. So we got Montgomery mm -hmm. today. What do we know about them? What concerns you most about the the Cougars? Yeah, I mean, Montgomery's always a, a scrappy team. They're always uh, competitive. They, they they play us really strong. Um, you know, Pete does a great job coaching that team, and uh, you know you you can always expect some good arms out of Montgomery. And I know they have a few this year, so you know I'm I'm expecting to see a high quality arm today against a high quality arm of our own. I think it's going to be a, a low scoring game, um, and it's going to come down to you know some uh, you know the fine details like the, the small parts of baseball. It's it's going to come down to those types of things. Welcome to 100 Central Baseball on HCTV. Today's matchup is between the 100 Central Red Devils and the Montgomery Cougars. I'm Nick Guzman alongside Scott Samanchek. Scott, what are you expecting from this one here today? This is going to be a tight game between the two teams. Great pitching matchup we're seeing today. Seeing Kyle McCoy go against Cole Hansen. Both Division I baseball commits. Kyle McCoy is a junior committed to Maryland. Cole Hansen committed to Rutgers also as a pitcher. So... Of course, two great pitchers facing off against each other. This is going to be a, a purely defensive game. Whoever can get that one shot on offense, I feel like can take it. Kyle McCoy pitched a complete game shutout in his first start of the year. That was Central's opening game of the season against Ridge. Four hits, one walk, nine strikeouts. He was absolutely dominant as the Red Devils and that won game that game. was a great way to start off the season for this Central team. Central only had one hit in that game as well. Barely pulled out the win with... A bit of a, a funky play all around, some a last inning, you know, um, thought from Coach Cousy, give them that lead to go ahead and win it for them to start off the season. So that was another great pitching matchup between the two teams. So McCoy really not having an easy start to the season for himself. Central 2-0 on the year. Last time out was an 8-4 to victory against Phillipsburg. The Red Devils look to improve to 3-0 and here today. Montgomery, on the other hand, they're three and one. They won their first three before dropping the last one. We're just about set to go here. Central coming into the year we ranked number six in the NJ.com preseason rankings. Yeah, I mean, a, a great ranking for a team, especially a team like this, which is very junior heavy. Entire, Almost entire starting lineup is all juniors, and some of them have never played a varsity game before this year, so 
an interesting uh, pick to have them so high up, but they very much proved themselves so far. It's going to be J.J. Malik, the shortstop, to lead things off as we're underway. First pitch low for McCoy for ball one. Malik off to a hot start this year. He's 6 for 10 as McCoy pours in the strike on the inside half. Yeah, Malik having a very good start to the year. He's a leader for this team. One one is swung on and missed, and the count is now one and two. And he struck him out. Great start to the night for Kyle McCoy. Starting off right where he left off last start. Yeah, McCoy just a, an absolute dominant pitcher. I mean, a perfect setup as a pitcher. Extremely tall, left-handed. He's got some nice movement and some nice whip on the ball. Adam Newfield is next, and he takes a cut and comes up empty. 0-1. Oh Newfield, the second baseman, 2 for 12 to start the year. As he watches a strike, and it's quickly 0-2. Yo, two down on three pitches, back-to-back -back strikeouts for McCoy. He's off to another dominant start in this one. Yeah, back in the fall, McCoy was going and, and tracked at about high 80s, 87, 89 with that fastball, which is something you don't really see much in most high school levels. Stephen Paul, the three-hitter, takes a strike on the inside half. Paul, four for ten to start the year. He's got a home run to his name. Two quick strikes from McCoy. O2 oh, high, and the count is now one and two. Paul, the senior, gets set. And he fouls that one back. McCoy's already proven he can stay consistently in that strike zone. In that one ball high, I mean, 0-2 count, you're going to be looking out of the zone. Gave, gave that one a ride. Coming on, diving effort. And they're going to say the ball dropped. A base hit for Paul. And Montgomery have their first base runner. Nick Ferry came on, but he just could not make the play in left field. Thought for a second that he came up with that one, but Cougars have a two-out base runner. The pitcher Hansen digs in in the cleanup spot. First pitch from McCoy is low for ball one. And lined foul from Hansen, who we mentioned the Rutgers commit for his pitching. It's already 8 for 16 this year with the bat. Off to a very hot start. Yeah, it's always kind of scary to see from a team being able to have a star pitcher also be one of their top batters. Really shows you how much of an all-around athlete Hansen is. Take his cut at that one, comes up empty, and it's one and two. Efficient pitching from McCoy. As I said, two balls so far, so... Very consistently in the zone. Coy sets that one's high. Good snag by Padre. The count is even at two.
Two outs, two and two to Hansen. To second. And they're able to make the play. Side retired. Good first inning from Kyle McCoy. We're scoreless heading to the bottom of the first. Yeah, very efficient beginning to the game. Very efficient to the start for McCoy. Get set here to go in the bottom of the first. Cole Hansen on the mound. Yeah, as, as we were talking about Hansen and McCoy, both of them being D1 commits. Hansen, similar to McCoy, of course, other side of the mound, but McCoy or Hansen, I should say, also about the same range of fastball as McCoy clocked in, mid to high 80s as well. Hansen, his first start of the year against Hillsboro was lights out. Complete game, 95 pitches, four hits, seven strikeouts, and just one walk. And it's going to be Christian Patino, center fielder, to lead things off for the Red Devils. Yeah, Patino, big part of this lineup, very consistent offensively, very powerful offensively as well. Gets set here in the bottom of the first. First pitch to Patino, and he looks at strike one. It's been a bit of a strange offensive start for Central. Just the one hit in the first game, and even though they scored eight runs against in, in their last game, they still just had four hits as Patino looks at strike two. But this is an offense, Scott, that has a lot of potential. Yes, everybody on this on this team has shown they have a lot of offensive power and offensive ability. They just haven't been able to produce so far this early in the season. But of course, that hasn't really stopped them from winning games, as their 2-0 and record would show you. Patino to third, tough hop, fielded, and Patino beats it out. Central of a leadoff base runner. It's a cool. tough hop there on Paul, but he made a strong throw. Patino just too fast. Yeah, Patino being able to leg that out. Great start for Central. I mean, that, that really will, will start you up energetically. Once you, a kid just beats out an infield grounder, I mean, you don't see that much, of course. I mean, that was a good play by Paul at third base. Just a little bit too fast. For... Lead off base runner for Central. Brandon Padre now the batter, the catcher. Padre looks at a strike on the inside half. Padre now a junior. If you remember back in 2019, he got varsity action as a freshman on this squad. Yeah, one of the few juniors who really have varsity time on this squad. Or Luke Longo tore his ACL right before that 2019 season in Central. Had a big need at catcher, and Padre stepped up as a freshman. 
He lines that one foul. Counters quickly 0-2 to Padre. Hansen gets set Padre to third. Another chance for Paul. His only plays to first. Padre retired. Runner moves up to second. Central a runner in scoring position with one out. Yeah, an acceptable move there for Padre. Got to come in and get a round of applause by his teammates being able to move the runner over, especially as only the first out. So still have two more to go in and get Patino all the way around. So Patino on second. Logan Mason is the batter. Mason takes up and in for ball one. Mason lays off for ball two. Mason still looking for his first hit of the year. He's 0 for 5. Patino at second, the 2 0. And Mason looks at a strike on the outside corner. Two one to Mason. Outside ball three. The three one fouled off. The count is full. Tino still at second with one out here in the bottom of the first. Three two from Hansen. Mason to right field. The catch is made. The runner tags and he'll advance up to third. Two outs now in the inning. Another great at bat. Although the stats won't show for it for Mason. That was a very solid at bat, being able to go to six pitches, being able to move the runner over to third now. Chase Fisher now the batter. Patino at third, two out. First pitch to Fisher up and in. And that's ball one. Fisher also looking for his first hit of the year. He's 0 for 5 so far. one is a strike. Count is even at 1. Fisher check swing to short. And they retire Fisher. The run does not score. And that retires the side. Central strand a runner in scoring position, scoreless after one. Yeah, I mean, efficient start there for Patino, but again, realize it's three ground balls that all led through that inning. So, although he did get a runner over to third, really not the most efficient way. i say probably Mason had that best hit of going and being able to go and put Patino on third. Biggest thing about McCoy as a pitcher, I mean, as I said, big lefty. He also has kind of a sidearm, or at least a, a slightly lower arm, uh, arm slot than just over the head, which gives it kind of more of a tail, more coming from an angle, which is a lot harder to find 
for a righty, I mean, a lot harder to locate. And it opens up that outside corner against a righty because that ball coming in on them, they really will see outside, think it's outside, and they'll just beat them. McCoy takes the mound for the start of the top of the second. Liam Kendall is the batter and the sh pitch is a strike on the inside half. Kendall the catcher, three for 13 to start the year. McCoy delivers another strike. Got him looking. The bat never came off Kendall's shoulder. Quick three pitch strikeout for McCoy to start the second. Yeah, very efficient, very great pitches all located. I mean, if you have a, a kid not be able to even think about swinging, that shows you the efficiency and, and the deception McCoy has. Zach Steele now digs in, takes a strike, the left fielder. Boy working very efficiently in the early going. That's strike two. Steele pops one foul. That'll go out of play. It remains 0-2. Swung on and missed, strike three. Another strikeout from McCoy. Now, Scott, if you're a if you're a opposing hitter, what do you have to do to try and get a hit off McCoy? He's so dominant right now. He's being extremely dominant, but also extremely dominant on these looks. I mean, first pitch strikes is extremely efficient on. First pitch of sitting was it was a ball, and that was the only one so far. So I feel like going and attacking early is probably one of your better shots because once you start getting behind, you see these batters are not really being able to touch him. Valore, now the designated hitter, is up. And it's quickly 0-2. McCoy cruising through the lower part of the order. Yeah, in a moment like this, all you need is a little poke. If anything, you don't need to be looking for a big hit, especially with the speed, the, the, the velocity that McCoy has. Valore fouls, fouls one off the first base side. Again, the 0-2. In there, strike three called. McCoy strikes out the side in the second. An example there of that outside arm angle. That ball is coming in on him. Looks like it's gonna, feels like it's gonna hit him, but being able to come at a great angle to be able to go and still graze the strike zone. Hanson takes back to the mound at the bottom of the second. Central have dominated this matchup against Montgomery in recent years. 2019, the most recent game, they won 10-4 here at Central. They won the last five matchups against the Cougars dating back to 2015. I mean, the biggest difference you can see offensively between the two teams already is just Central is at least making contact a lot more as you see three ground balls as Montgomery hasn't made contact at all I mean they had one single but that's been the only thing that's dropped in Gonna be Ryan Fascinelli to lead things off. Bottom of the second. 
Fascinelli one for seven to start the year. Hanson the righty gets set to throw. He pours in a strike on the outside corner, quickly 0-1. Hanson pours over strike two. Both these pitchers showing that they're not going to go behind the count very often. Fascinelli lays off the high fastball. Count is now one and two. Just high. Hanson didn't like that call. It's two and two to Fascinelli. Gets a piece of it, fouls it off. Another good at bat coming from this Red Devils team. Fascinelli to right. That one off the top of the wall. Fascinelli digging for second. He'll stop there. And he missed the home run by inches. Asking to see if it is a home run, if it went off the if it's off the if it's off the shed. They're checking. They want it to be off the shed, but I think it'll just be called as a double. Central are claiming it hit the shed. Extremely close. It's 3.05 to the corner there in right field, and there's a little indent. And a fast Nelly missed home run. He missed it by inches. Nevertheless, he's on second. Central leadoff base runner in scoring position. Nick Ferry now. The junior looks to drop down a bunt. Central working efficiently. They're working smart on the base paths rather than looking for a big hit to go be able to make a big play. They'll go and take the slow route. It's the hardest hit ball so far against Hanson from Fascinelli. Ferry pops one up on the infield. Catch is made, one out. Newfield makes the play. Fascinelli still on second with one out. Interesting tactic to go fake but fake but swing. Not something you see very often, mostly because you're moving so much to go pull the bunt back and then immediately swing. Didn't work there for Ferry. Er. Chase Moskowitz now takes a strike. On that Fascinelli ball, the central players are claiming that it hit the shed right in right field, which is just behind the wall. That one pulled foul. Count is quickly 0 and 2. Nick Ferry now in low two hole. Lays off the breaking ball. Stays alive and it's one and two. So going down the order for today, I mean, we already saw most of these. Patino had a, a great start to the inning with that uh, start to the game, I should say, the ground ball. Padre after him, Mason, Fisher, Fascinelli, which we saw a great hit there. Brunetti was the one that just had that infield fly on that one. Now, as we said, Ferry's up now. Moskowitz up next and Latham in place of McCoy in the batting order. Ferry swung on and missed. Strike three, throw down to first. They're going to try and advance. Fascinelli in there. Ball gets away. And Fascinelli can trot on home with the first run of the game. Central manufacture a run. They've got an early one nothing lead. Again, although that one wasn't intentional, that little the little baseball that Central likes to play. Great base running there, but Fascinelli waiting for the throw. 
forcing a throw and that one going away from them. Two out, nobody on now. It's going to be Moskowitz. Takes that one away for ball one. Moskowitz finds himself quickly in an 0-2 hole. Moskowitz, one for five to start the year. That fastball sails on Hansen. The one, two, in there for strike two. Count even against Moskowitz is two and two. Pops one up to second. And that retires this side, not before Central get the run from Fascinelli. It's one nothing after two. Yeah, solid offense there from Central. Of course, that Fascinelli hit inches away, if not debatable, whether it was a home run or not. But the ability that Central had to go and be able to work him all the way around Say an interesting at bat by Ferry to go and get him scored. But nevertheless, still scored him, still puts him up one nothing. I think the biggest takeaway from that last inning uh is a difference between uh kinda like the the morale you see from Hansen. He had a few times where either annoyed with the call, so he, I mean he kinda showed that visually, but also at the same time with that drop third strike, he seemed visually I'd say he seemed visually off from the result of that play. Central definitely been making a lot better contact against Hansen than than Montgomery even has against McCoy. He's been dominant through these first two innings. Struck out the side in the second. Billy Catramatos will lead things off for the Cougars. In the top of the third. Catramatos, the right fielder, just one at bat so far this year. He swings through the McCoy fastball. It's 0 and 1. One low and in. This game seems to be controlled by McCoy. And it's quickly one and two. He's the one in control right, whether Montgomery can make contact or not so far. The one two to Catramatos is low. Scott, it feels like if Montgomery are going to want to do something against McCoy in this game, they're going to have to try and manufacture a run similar to the way Central did in that second inning. Katramatos goes down on the high fastball. Another strikeout for McCoy. Six for McCoy so far today. Extremely efficient, taking this whole game in his hands. I mean, we saw it. We're seeing it today. We saw it during their Ridge game. The power that McCoy has as a pitcher and the efficiency he has on the mound is extremely helpful for the central team. Mark Jenkins now the batter. As McCoy pours in a strike, it's one and one. Fouled back and it's one and two. McCoy also working at a very quick pace so far. Yeah, it's not something you see a ton. McCoy gets the ball, takes only a few seconds on the mound to get a sign, and then goes right into it and of course, it doesn't take long for the ball to reach the plate. 
The one two, another strikeout from McCoy, his seventh. Go back to the top of the order for the Cougars. JJ Malik now the batter. And there's a ball inside from McCoy, one and oh. Two and oh to Malik, one of the rare times today McCoy's been behind in the count. Yeah, I mean at this point uh, Montgomery is probably looking to the top of their lineup be able to produce something. Line foul the other way. Especially Malik here who already dropped one in. So they're looking to, to be able to at least show that he can get contact, maybe get something rolling for this team. 2-1 to Malik. Popped foul. And that'll just go out of play on the first base side. Count is even at two. McCoy wasn't behind for long in this count. Work back quickly. Malik stays alive, fouls it off again. At the same time, we're seeing a good at bat from Malik here. I mean, being able to put the bat on the ball is something that this Montgomery team has not really been able to do so far. So, being able to go and at least put something on the ball, be able to get something tapped around. Two two from McCoy just missed, and that's ball three. Now three and two to Malik. Got him with the high fastball. McCoy strikes out the side in back to back innings, his eighth strikeout of the day. Eight of the nine outs coming so far in strikeouts. Nick, at what point can I say that McCoy is dealing? I think you can say that right now. He's dealing. I feel like if the Cougars are going to get anything going on offense, it's going to be from the top of the order. Yeah, that I mean, was probably the, the best at-bat they've put together so far with Malik. Yeah, Malik had a very great at-bat being able to go and at least get some contact on the ball. I mean, they're all foul balls, clearly, going on the right side, so a bit late. But being able to go and just tap some around, being able to mainly, uh, sorry, be able to try and get one in play, maybe get one in play and start something is really what they need to do because... As we said, McCoy, eight out of the nine outs have been strikeouts, so really has just proven his efficiency and his dominance against this team. You said Malik had a good at-bat, and he still struck out, so that tells you about the dominance of McCoy early on in this one, picking up right where he left off in his first start against Ridge. Yeah, I think a, a big game. difference between the two teams is the efficiency against these higher level pitchers as we've been saying McCoy Malcolm is seeing almost, uh, seeming almost lost against McCoy at least at the bottom of the order is seeing somewhat lost against them as Central has proven that all around their order they have the ability to go and time up a pitcher like this for like, how dominant McCoy was in his last start he had nine strikeouts against Rich he's got eight already through three here against Montgomery Jeff Latham, the designated hitter, hitting in the nine hole. Looks to drop down a bunt. Nice bunt from Latham. That'll just roll foul. We Latham, then Patino and Padre in the bottom of the third. That one's a ball. Count is even at one. Latham 0 for 4 to start the year. Looking for his first hit. That one from Hanson in for a strike, and it's 1 and 2. One two from Hanson struck him out. 
Latham down swinging. Back to the top of the order for the Red Devils. Christian Patino. Hanson sets and delivers a strike on the inside corner. Yeah, solid pitch there to start off. Good off speed. Quickly 0 and 2 to Patino. Pulls that one just foul on the third base side. Yeah, the swing there just a staying alive swing being able to go keep his at bat going. Foul that outside off speed. Yo two from Hansen. Patino bouncing ball. Fielded by the shortstop and a nice play. To retire Patino. Malik there with the put out. Quickly two out for Central now Brandon Padre. Take his second at bat of the game. Padre first pitch again to shortstop. Another chance for Malik. Another strong throw. Central quickly retired in the bottom of the third. Red Devils one, Cougars nothing after three. Something interesting about this Central team, they've played together a lot, I mean, throughout their years, as we said, primarily a junior class. But some players who played together just this fall, we saw Fisher, Fastinelli, Jake Stoller, Patino, Padre, Zarnecki, and Casella all played together. Of course, it's Jared Casella, not the Tyler Casella we had here just a few years ago for this team, but all these players played just a fall league together, so that kind of shows you the grouping they have together. Sometimes you get junior heavy squads that Really, it's junior heavy because there's not a lot of good seniors. But on this team, you've still got Zarnecki as a senior who's injured right now. And Brunetti as well. Brunetti. And it's not even that you could say that they have not as strong of a senior squad. It's more of just the junior squad itself is so strong. I mean, of course, McCoy here. We had Padre that we've already talked about. Nick Ferry's already committed to play at Seton Hall as a junior. As a squad, this team, very, very powerful, especially as a junior. Adam Newfield, two hitter will lead things off, two, three, four for Montgomery. In the fourth, they try and get something going against McCoy, first pitch fouled back. Quite eight of his nine outs so far coming via the strikeout. That one in the air to left. Ferry ranging over. Makes a nice grab. Quickly one away. First one in a while. Now created purely by McCoy. First pitch to Paul, swung on a miss, strike one. Stephen Paul, who also does some pitching for these Cougars. Playing third base today, he's quickly in an 0-2 hole. Paul fouls that one back. A note I would make in most situations, but not so far this game has been going. Montgomery, very mobile team on the bases. They've been not afraid to steal. First pitch, another chance for Ferry. 
Another nice grab for Nick Ferry. Two down in the fourth. Now, just as you said, Nick, you think the hitting's going to come from the top of the order. They've shown you know, those last two batters, they can start making contact. It's just a matter of good contact. Coming up the next time they'll be up. That's the pitcher, Hanson, will try and help his own cause here. Fouls the first pitch back for strike one. That one popped up along the first base side. Pops out of the glove of Fisher. Fisher will probably say you should have had that ball. Counters 0-2 to Hansen. That side of the infield is playing pretty far back, so it was quite the run for Fisher. One pulled the foul along the third base side. And the 0 2 to Hansen. Bouncing ball. Fielded by the second baseman. They've got no play at first. Hansen is safe. Two out base runner for Montgomery. It'll be Liam Kendall the catcher. With Hanson at first and two out. First pitch from McCoy is low. Ball one. Kendall. Foul along the first base side. Count is even at one. Montgomery now more efficiently going putting the ball in play. One one for McCoy. Little bit high, that's ball two. The pitcher Hansen on first. Cut and a miss, and it's two and two. Two and two to Hanson. Strike three called. Locked him up. I think the biggest thing that you saw in that inning, especially that ground ball single that Montgomery has. They, although they are making more contact, they still are not making efficient contact. Those swings are a lot more defensive and kind of just poked at it. was able to go and, and get one in the infield. That right side of the infield plays very far back. You saw Fisher on that little foul ball and then Moskowitz as well at second base, both having to come in quite the distance to go and make the play. So I think that's the that's the biggest difference between that hit and that not being a hit. In this the top of this Montgomery order, Malik, Newfield, and Paul are really the only ones who've made any kind of contact against McCoy so far. And I mean, just that last at bat, wonderful finish to it, be able to lock him up on the inside.
and McCoy as a pitcher has been very efficient. Just under 60 pitches so far in the game. So I mean 15 pitches about per inning which is great look of what you want as a pitcher. And especially somebody who they look to to go an entire game or a majority of the game. Be three, four, five for Central in the bottom of the fourth. Logan Mason will lead things off. Mason attacks the first pitch and fouls it off. Mason is quite the family line here at Hunter and Central. Brother Colin Mason, as well as Emily Mason. Colin, who played here just a few years back, uh, about f three years, I should say, able uh, a center fielder, similar to, to Logan here, and Emily, soccer player for, senior soccer player, I should say, here for Central. I mean, they played at Rutgers. Mason, strike three, throw down to first. And Mason is quickly retired, one out here in the bottom of the fourth. It'll be Chase Fisher with one out here in the fourth. Fisher takes up and in for ball one. She's able to hold the swing there. Counters even at one. Central's run coming in the second inning. For Ryan Fascinelli, he's a swing and a miss there from Fisher. Hanson seems you to said, found his groove here. Yes, and as you said, this team full of hitters. At least you have the ability to hit. They just haven't gotten to that point yet this year. One, two to Fisher. In the air and foul. Along the first base side. One, two. Outside. Counters even at two. Fisher, another ball in the dirt. Strike three. And the throw down at first retires Fisher. Two out in the fourth. Yeah, uh, two pitches in the derby, able to get the two sh two swings. That's going to be Ryan Fascinelli, who's been the extent of Central's offense here today. Doubled off the right field wall, inches away from a home run, and scored on an error. And that's the difference so far. And Fascinelli went, and that's strike one. Hanson now seems to be getting back in his groove. Up in the count is even at one. And of course, that's the biggest thing. I mean, we've been talking a lot about McCoy. We, we mentioned it a little bit. Hanson's still not any less of a pitcher. Fascinelli. Short center, and that'll retire the side. Central go down one, two, three in the bottom of the fourth. We head to the fifth. The Red Devils still leading one nothing.
I mean, this game going by extremely quick, 4 o'clock start. Just about 4.50 right now, a little bit past that. So already through four innings, just under an hour in. Shows kind of that pitching duel that we're seeing so far. Very similar to McCoy's first start of the year. So we get set here for the top of the fifth. Zach Steele will lead things off. At least six, seven, eight for the Cougars. So they look to try and get something off of Kyle McCoy. First pitch grounded to third. Fielded nicely, and Steele retired. Brunetti with a nice play at third. Quick start there from McCoy this inning. But also shows you how now once through the order, this Montgomery team is now starting to kind of jump on the ball a little bit more. Valore, the designated hitter. He's swinging first pitch, and he lines one up the middle for a base hit. So one out base runner for the Cougars, both batters in this inning, very aggressive. We catch Ramados now with one on one out. McCoy checks on Valori at first. Billy Catramato's the right fielder. He takes a strike low and in. McCoy will check on the runner. They've got him in the rundown. Valori is tagged out. And the runner immediately erased. Efficient play there by Central. I mean, McCoy, as a pitcher, I mean, a left-handed pitcher, you're not being able to see that much. People are very, very safe at first most of the time, but great move there. So quickly two out, and now it's 0-2 to catch your mottos. The 0 2 from McCoy. Just outside. It's ball one. And that's strike three. So it was once a promising, promising inning for Montgomery. They're quickly retired in the fifth. Central still up 1 nothing. Again, efficient pitching by McCoy. Not many pitches pitched that inning. Only about six in that inning. McCoy now 10 Ks on the day. Coming up in this inning, we'll see Brunetti, Ferry, and then Moskowitz. Six, seven, eight for the Red Devils. Not much to say about these next three, but you can't say that for much of the players in this game for both teams. Dylan Brunetti, the third baseman, to lead things off. Hanson. 
giving up the run. And the second inning has really settled down. He's been lights out since. First pitch to Bernetti in the bottom of the fifth. He takes up and in for ball one. Bernetti up in the count, 2-0. and oh. And that's ball three to Bernetti. The biggest thing here as a pitcher, basically a free strike here. I mean, not many people are going to be looking to go and swing on 3-0. The 3-0 from Hanson is inside and central of a leadoff base runner in the bottom of the fifth. First walk of the game for either team. Nick Ferry now digs in from the left side. Brunetti at first, and there's a strike from Hansen. As I said, first walk of the game, third base runner for the Red Devils. It's quickly on two to Ferry. Ball gets away, and Brunetti will advance to second. Pitch wasn't in the dirt, just popped out of the glove. Yeah, it's already happened at least once today for Montgomery. But of course, the last time wasn't in his situation with anybody on. Runner on second, nobody out. Ferry tries to hold the swing. Bernetti again trying for third. Ball gets away. Nick Bernetti's going to trot on home. Central up 2 0 against Montgomery. Very similar to the way they scored their first run. Central up 2 nothing here in the fifth. Yeah, Dylan Brunetti, again, as I said about this team, efficient and smart on the base path, smart with what they do. Bit risky on the, the steal of third. It was a good block right in front of the catcher, but throw kind of into Brunetti, able to go through to the outfield and get another score. Central up 2-0, Ferry down on strikes. That's the first out of the fifth. Montgomery hurting themselves in this game, throwing the ball around the infield. Yeah, I mean, those are the, that's the two reasons for the two runs. Just throwing the ball away. Moskowitz now, and he's hit by the pitch. And Moskowitz will take first base. Hanson a little more erratic in this fifth inning. Yeah, a walk and then the hit by pitch. I think after seeing that central, you need to go and take a few pitches. See if Hansen is working against himself right now. Uh, Jeff Latham, the nine hitter. One on, one out, one run already home. They'll check on the run, that's a close play, but back in time is Moskowitz. At the strike on the outside, half to Latham. And it's 0-1. Jeff Latham still looking for his first hit of the year. One outside, it's 1-1. One one. Yeah, a key right now for this inning, at least with how Hans is throwing, is kind of let him work himself. Take the opportunities he has if he does make a mistake. But if he goes and he walks you, don't be a, don't be too anxious to go and start trying to swing at balls. I mean, especially with the last inning, you had two strikeouts with balls in the dirt. There goes Moskowitz, fouled back by Latham. Central have not been afraid to run in this game. K-1. 
count. Now one and two to Jeff Latham. On the ground, foul along the first base side. Again, the one two, Latham fouls it off and stays alive. Really not the thing you want to see as a base runner. I mean, of course, great for Latham staying alive, being able to foul a few off, but at the same time, you know, draining Moskowitz here, he's tried to steal on two foul balls. Again, the one two. Check on Moskowitz. Moskowitz running again. Close play, and again the ball goes into center field. Latham down on strikes, but Moskowitz is at second with two out. Back to the top of the order for the Red Devils. Kind of a bold play, I'd say, to go and have him steal a third time, but again, Kuzi seeing that his team's struggling with their throws, so being able to go and test their arms it worked out for him. Christian Patino is hit by the pitch. Central left first and second with two out. Hanson really a bit wild in this fifth inning. So two on, two out for the catcher Padre. Grounded out twice already. Central leading Montgomery 2 0 in the bottom of the fifth. Padre attacks the first pitch, drives it to center field. But he is retired for the third out. Little movement needed there by the center fielder. So Kyle McCoy will take back to the mound in the top of the sixth. The Red Devils up 2 0. Two very contradicting half innings for both teams. We saw Central extremely efficient. McCoy only six pitches being able to get out of that inning. And then for Montgomery, Hanson bit rough going, letting Central go and put one up on the board against them. Hitting two batters, walking one. And I think the most important thing here is the longevity of both pitchers. If Hanson can stay in the game, or how long McCoy can stay, in, can stay at least consistent in this game. I mean, we already see Hanson kind of at least lost it in that last half inning. The test will be the next two, or at least one, for Hanson. I mean, the biggest thing for Central here, their goal every time McCoy takes him out is for him to go complete game. And he's been very efficient so far in doing that. Only about 65 pitches so far through five whole innings. Also pitching on a full week's rest. Central's home opener against Ridge McCoy. It's one week ago where he pitched the shutout. He's well rested as we start at the top of the sixth. Mac Jenkins, the nine hitter, looks to drop down a bunt. McCoy Field's going to be close, and he got him. Jenkins trying to make something happen. McCoy with the nice play, and there's one out in the sixth. Yeah, good attempt there. Be able to try to get a base runner on, especially with a lefty pitcher having to do that full turn to go and be able to get it over to first. But for McCoy, with his frame, that's only about two steps to get over there. J.J. Malik now. So we head to the top of the order. Great off speed to start off the at-bat. Especially against a batter who's proved that he can hit the fastball for solid contact. 
Malik quickly behind 0 and 2. Another one there. I say th throw him a third one. He does not does not take my advice, and I'd recommend that not do that. I mean, he, he is the one committed to go to Maryland, so I take advice from him a lot more than from me. <laughs> McCoy gets him with the fastball. Quickly two outs in the sixth. Kyle McCoy is rolling in this one. First pitch to Newfield fouled off. And that one's fouled off as quickly 0-2. This one's certainly living up to its billing so far as a pitcher's duel. Kyle McCoy's been completely dominant. Hanson's also pitched very well. Central Street runs have scored on errors. Newfield fouls it back. Yeah, those two foul balls, I'd like to say that this batter's been on kind of the back foot here. First one late on an inside pitch, that one high, just really kind of wait back. That one's down. Again, the pitch from McCoy fouled back. Two and two. Two two to Newfield. Put in play to second. Moskowitz gathers and that retires the side in the sixth inning. McCoy six scoreless. Central up two nothing as they had to bat in the sixth. Yeah, as been saying every time, great efficiency from Kyle McCoy. Ending that half inning, ending. Sorry, six full innings of pitching, 75 pitches. Hansen about 73 through just five. So, of course, McCoy having the pitching count advantage, but both still relatively low, as you said, pitching duel we have here between the two teams. Neither team seem to have any plans of going and taking either of these pitchers out. It's a little scary to think about when you think how much talent Central has on offense. The fact they haven't really gotten going so far this year, and they're still up 2 nothing this game with a chance to be 3-0. and Yeah, exactly. They have, I mean, we've been saying this all game, they've had the, the offensive talents, but not really the offensive stats to go and, and represent that. But still... 2-0 and in the season, not really much you can complain about, especially this early in the season. Three, four, five for Central. Bottom half of the sixth. Mason is the batter, swings to the first pitch and misses. Strike one. Yeah, not really what you want to do to Central. I mean, I think going up here, especially with the half inning that Hansen had, you want to wait. One down. Mason gets the count even at one. One one is fouled back. Mason jumping on that fastball. Just barely missed it. A one two from Hansen is low. Good block by the catcher, and it's two and two.
2-2 to Mason. Inside, the count is full. Central, these last two innings really doing a better job working the count off of Hansen. 3-2 to second. A nice play there as Logan Mason is retired. One out in the bottom of the sixth. Chase Fisher now with nobody on. Up and away. Ball one. Off in the bat on the off speed outside. I think at a point like this, Central, again, still needs to kind of be a little back and waiting for the strike. I mean, a call there. Would, great pitch by Hanson Fisher. I think a bit early on it. Two strikes to Fisher, and that's strike three. Two outs in the sixth, Fisher retired. Ryan Fascinelli was inches away from a home run in the second inning. Really? Only One of the only things you can really say about this team so far, I mean, really is in, in the game as a whole, is keep referring back to that Fascinelli hit because it really hasn't been all that really. much to talk about for either team offensively besides that. Central have scored both their runs on errors. And coming in, we knew it was going to be a pitcher's duel. Both these pitchers committed to Division One programs. It certainly lived up to the billing. Is that strike two? Fascinelli taking all the way. As another event there where catcher from Montgomery unable to handle the pitch and just be deflecting off his glove. One two from Hanson to Fascinelli. And he fouls it off along the first base side. Again the one two. In the dirt, count is even at two. Hanson reaching close to ninety pitches on the day. Through 95 in his first start of the year. I think you can only kind of tell that it's affecting him. I mean, you see, of course, he is being a little more inaccurate, but that's not really affecting his play as a whole. Still working very well against these Red Devils. 2-2 Two -two pitches off the plate. Fascinelli has worked the count full. With two out in the sixth. Pitch strike three called. Fascinelli thought it was inside. Last ups for Montgomery in the seventh. McCoy tries to complete the shutout. Yeah, McCoy already 11 Ks on the day. It's about 75 pitches as well, so has the pitches in him to go and Look to complete this game. So last ups here for the Cougars. 
Two nothing central in the top of the seventh. Three four five for Montgomery as they try and tie this one up against McCoy. Stephen Paul, the third baseman, will lead things off. McCoy's been pretty much perfect so far. No one up in the central bullpen, so this is Kyle McCoy's game to finish. 1-0 to Paul. Pop foul. That'll go out of play. Fly ball to right. A little foul. They catch it. They call it in play. That would be the one question. I think it was out of play. Catch was made and right, but they are going to call out of play. And Paul will stay alive. Solid rip there, though. Nice running snag by Mason. One and two the count. Mason deals to Paul. Ground ball, Mason, Mason knocks it down. <laughs> McCoy, rather. And that's the first out. McCoy, second time in this game, has fielded his own position well. And there's a one out in the seventh. Montgomery, two outs, get these two runs. Try to bring themselves back in it. Cole Hansen, the pitcher, watches outside for ball one. Ground ball to short. Two out. Fascinelli with a nice play at short. And McCoy one out away from another complete game shutout. Kendall, the catcher, Liam Kendall, has had a bit of trouble fielding his own position today. 80 pitches in, McCoy seems like he hasn't lost anything in either velocity nor accuracy. Quickly 0-2, Montgomery down to their final strike. Oh and two. Struck him out and the ball game is over. Another complete game shutout from Kyle McCoy. Central able to scratch across two runs. They beat Montgomery 2-0. As we said, McCoy out there efficiently. 12 Ks, as we called it, dealing. He was out there doing extremely well on the mound. Extremely efficient. Under 90 pitches. It was, it was just amazing for one pitcher to go through seven innings. Under 90 pitches. Offensively, Central, of course, still not reaching the point that they have the potential to and they have the ability to, but they are staying and being able to win these games. Of course, now improving to 3-0 and on the season. So they've been, they've been making out with what they, what they have gotten as a team. And, I mean, I think the, the biggest player in these last two games has been Kyle McCoy, or at least in the, in the last two starts for McCoy. He has been really taking the game by himself. We're going to get a chance to talk to Kyle McCoy. Okay, Kyle, so another complete game shutout today. What do you think was working for you out on the mound? My fastball, definitely. I think I was getting ahead in the counts, especially early in the game. I was getting ahead, you know, and then I put them in a situation they don't want to be in. So, and then, like I usually do, I just let my team play behind me. You know, I know they're a great defensive team. I know they'll make the plays. So I knew I was just going to pitch to contact, and, you know, the strikeouts come and go. But I just try to pitch to contact, let my team do the rest, and they did great out there in the offense, getting me two runs. You guys are 3-0 now to start the year. What do you like about the way your start started so far? I love it. I mean, 
our wins haven't been, you know, the greatest hitting wise, but I like it. We get to get gritty wins, you know, see what it's like, not to always be able to hit. And, you know, I'm, I'm really liking the way we fought back, especially against uh, Peberg. You know, we, we were down going in the last inning and we fought back. And I love seeing the grit out of our team. And, you know, I'm happy so far. And it might not look so good on paper, but I'm, I'm proud of the way they fought back. Okay, thanks, Kyle. No, thank you. We just spoke to Kyle McCoy, another complete game shutout. Back to back for him to start the year. He's racking up the strikes out today. Strikeouts today, like he said, Central not really hitting the ball well so far to start the year. They're able to scratch across two runs. Vassinelli scored one, Brunetti scored the other. For HCTV, I'm Nick Guzman alongside Scott Zaman. Check the final here at 100 Central. Red Devils two, Cougars nothing. Thank you for tuning in.